Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I'm going to be talking how, talking about how I, Scott Garibay, think that I owe one of the jobs I had in my IT information technology career, specifically to Steve Zahn, the actor. So it's kind of an unusual story, but I would like to share it with you. So, uh, Steve Zahn is one of my absolute favorite actors, and I think when I'm done with this story, you'll understand why. Okay, so, uh, so now one of the reasons why I'm talking about this, about Steve Zahn today, is, one, I, I just, you know, like, this is one of those days where I'm, it's, I'm, it's the start of my day, and I just feel so blessed, and, and I'm just having a wonderful day, and it's not even, you know, it's not even 8.30 a.m. yet, you know, and it's just really, and I just just filled with joy, right? So I wake up this morning and uh, when I wake up in the morning, I get ready. I grab my phone and I watch, you know, maybe I read an article or I watch a little television on my phone, carrying it around with me as I get dressed and, you know, as I brush my teeth and stuff like that, right? So basically, um, I was, you know, I was doing this thing where I'm just moving around and I put on Hulu and I don't, I'm in a little bit of a show hole right now. I don't have anything to watch. And Hulu comes up with this uh, thumbnail for The Crossing. And I don't know anything about it, but it looks sci-fi-y. And, you know, and uh, and it has a great thumbnail where it's like just this one person staring into this like oval abyss of light. And I'm like, oh, that looks cool. What I wonder what that is, you know. So I click the, the thumbnail and I start watching The Crossing. It's a brand new show that just started from ABC. And I'm watching it on Hulu and I will be watching the entire season... Uh, and the reason why is uh, in the first scene you get to see Steve Zahn and he's playing a, a sheriff, right? And so this is his new show. It's about people who are uh, are um, are essentially uh, caught up in this. It's about very, very unusual refugees. And it has a sci-fi element and I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be a wonderful show. And I'm really excited that Steve Zahn is the star of this brand new show. And I think it's going to be a great show because I think Steve Zahn is an absolutely amazing actor. But I've thought this for like two decades. And um, and so I just want to share with you why, right? So the reason why I'm thinking about Steve Zahn today is The Crossing. You should definitely check it out. It's his new project. I think it's going to be awesome because Steve Zahn's in it. Uh, it has a really cool premise. Check it out. All right. But let me talk about why I'm such a big fan of Steve Zahn and why I think he's responsible for my uh, for my getting one of my jobs in my IT career. Now, uh, so basically, I went to interview for a job. It's not the current job I have. It's previous to this one. But it was one of uh, probably three major jobs that I've had in my IT career. And it was really critical to me, you know, establishing a path. <coughs> Excuse me. Establishing a specific path on my IT career, and it was a really great job. It turned out to be a great job. It paid well. I was able to provide value for the company for several years, and I was able to learn a lot and add to my my professional skill set a lot. So this job was really important to me, right? So the way I got this job was, I went in for the interview, and when I go in, it was a room of six people interviewing interviewing me only, right? So a lot of places when they bring in for IT. They sit you in a room and then they, they do this conga line of talk to this person, talk to this person, talk to this person. Well, this place I went, they were like, we're going to interview you all at once and we're just going to fire our questions off of you. And it's going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be nervous. But if you can't handle this, you, you know, like they didn't say this. They said it afterwards, you know, once I got the job. But they're like, the reason we do it that way is if that person can't handle six people answering them questions, they can't handle the heat at this company. Right, so it's kind of like, you know, like, okay, you know, and it was, it's pretty intense, actually. So I go in and, um, and basically the job was for an individual contributor job. And basically, uh, um, basically, you know, it's information technology and they asked me a whole lot of questions and I only got about a third of the questions right, right? And I was, and, I, and honestly, I was struggling because I was like, hey, um, you know, I know you need this specific skill set. I have about a third or half of that, you know, and I knew that I didn't have, I was not, at the end of the interview, I knew I had not checked all the boxes that they wanted checked for their candidate for that job, right? And what was really great was at the end, actually, this lady almost kind of served up a t-ball and 
sometimes in life, there's this gift that I've been using recently. It's the Voltron job, where like Voltron just drops out of the sky and skids on the dirt and, you know, and like pulls out its sword. And you're, you know, you're like, that's an awesome entry. You know, like, and, and basically there's these moments in life where everything goes well and you just knock the ball out of the park, right? And this was one of them, right? So for me specifically, right? So basically, uh, the person said, you know, um, we've uh, we've interviewed quite a few candidates for this, and some of the candidates who are, um, you know, some of the candidates have talked about leadership skills. You didn't talk about leadership skills at all, right? And I said, oh, you know, well, that, that's a great point. The reason I didn't talk about leadership skills is uh, as I read this, this, uh, as I read this position. This is an individual contributor position, and uh, please correct me if I didn't understand, but it didn't look like this position was going to be leading anyone. In fact, it would be following a, a, a distinct leader within your organization to accomplish goals that need to be uh, that need to be done, right? And then I said, well, but what I want to tell you is, I, you know, to tell the truth, I don't consider myself a great leader. Uh, by the way, this is over 10 years ago, right? I think things have changed a little bit now, but we'll get there, right? And I said, I don't consider myself a great leader. I consider myself a great follower. And, I, and I'm and i comfortable with that. And the reason why is I think the world is filled with people who want to lead. And uh, especially in these types of, in, in IT, I don't really see a shortage of people who want to lead, right? But I do see a little bit of a shortage of people who are great followers. And I consider myself a great follower. And the reason for this is when I was very young, I read a book by, um, uh, I read a book around the world in 80 days and it talked about this gentleman, Phileas Fogg, right? And he had uh, a follower, right? And his name was Passepartout. And Passepartout was awesome. He was really super capable. He was super intelligent. He was courageous and he was loyal, right? And when I read that book, I really empathized and really connected with Passepartout. Because, because I really believe when I read that book that Passepartout was more capable than Phileas Fogg. But Passepartout was choosing to play the role of follower and do it well because in this world, people need great followers. People who will execute on important tasks. People who may even be more capable of leadership than the people who are leading them, but who are humble and believe that you should serve in the role that is in front of you and execute it as well as possible. So the reality is, I really connect with Passport 2, and I bring that, uh, that connection to all of my work. And I consider myself a passport too. And in whatever, and if I'm fortunate to get this position, whoever is my lead, I will do everything possible to make sure that every goal that person has is accomplished within that year. And I bring the sense of urgency and the um, and the and the capability and the and uh, that passport too brought to his service to Phileas Fogg. And then I said nothing, right? And there was, I'm not kidding, there was about five to seven seconds of silence. And one dude looked over to the other lady, and, it, and, and I knew in that, in that uh, you know, when he looked over to that other lady, and in the silence, I was like, bam, I got this job, right? Like, and I did, I did, I got that job. They literally called two and a half hours later, and they're like, you start on Monday. And it was amazing. I was, I was so happy, right? Now, here's the thing, right? Uh, Steve Zahn was not in an Around the World in 80 Days movie, but he was in one of my favorite movies in the entire world, right? And that is Sahara. If you have not seen Sahara, you need to see Sahara. It is an amazing film. And in that film, uh, Steve Zahn is past part two, right? So let me talk a little bit about the movie Sahara. I'm pretty sure it was like 2005, right? And uh, it's Matthew McConaughey, Steve Zahn, Penelope Cruz, the guy who was in the Fargo movie and who's on Shameless now, it's a wonderful, wonderful film. I absolutely loved it, and um, and it's just it's a great film. Now it actually is based on a Clive Cussler novel, and it's a it's an it's like essentially an American James Bond story, 
about a Civil War ship that's found in Africa. And it's really, really cool. And actually, you know, Clive Custler novels are not my jam, right? I Like, I tried one and I'm like, this is just an American James Bond, right? And I really didn't like it, right? But I am in love with the movie Sahara. It's one of, it's like this weird diamond in my favorite movie list, right? I absolutely love Sahara and it, it is a wonderful, wonderful film. And in that movie, right, which I had just seen right before this interview, right, I had, um, I had seen Steve Zahn actually play out the role of Passepartout in the film, right? So when I looked at the movie Sahara, I was like, oh my gosh, Steve Zahn is being Passepartout in this film. So it was in my mind. And the, the role, I think, I think the Sahara role is Steve Zahn's greatest role ever. I think he did a, just a fantastic job in this movie, in that movie. And I think Steve Zahn is the reason that Sahara is such a special film, right? Although it's extremely well executed across the board. It's a great story. It's really well acted. There's lots of action. It's really well shot. It's a really special, wonderful movie. And it's a bit of a sleeper. Not many people are like, oh, Sahara, I love Sahara. In fact, every time I talk about it, everybody's like, Sahara, what are you talking about? Right? But like, I love that film. It's one of my favorite films. And I really feel that seeing Steve Zahn in that role in Sahara put Passepartout in my mind for that job and that that ending statement got me over the pack. Like, it made me look special. And I am special. I am darn good at IT, right? And But the reality is you can't always be sure that, you, that you're going to be able to show people that you're special, that you are worth, you know, the money that they're going to pay. You know, and I got lucky that day. And actually, you know, I really, I feel I was blessed that day. And, uh, and Steve, you know, Steve Zahn's performance had reminded me of that book I had read when I was young. And if you watch Sahara, you will see, you know, the value of a follower. Steve Zahn in that movie, he's, he's Matthew McConaughey's follower and, and Matthew McConaughey is leading, right? Excuse me. But they are friends in that film. But they have a leader and follower relationship, Right? Steve Zahn is being told what to do in that movie. But at no point in that film does he ever complain or does he ever think, bring anything but his best, his best to every single task that's assigned to him, right? And when I watched that role that Steve Zahn played in Sahara, it's so special to me. It's so special that I'll even go further than that. I actually, you know, I have, I have a number of influences on me personally and how I live my life, right? Sahara is one of those influences. It's not the most important, but it's an important one, right? And here's why. When I saw that role, the way that Steve Zahn played follower the Matthew McConaughey in that film, here's what he did. He showed loyalty. His character was loyal. He was empathetic, right? He was smart. He was funny. And here's a big one, high energy. He has high energy right? And every single one of those attributes I aspire to. I aspire to. I connect so much with Steve Zahn in that role. Loyalty, empathy, intelligence, right? Uh, funniness, a good sense of humor. And then, um, you know, there's just so many aspects to that role. And, uh, and just, you know, uh, oh, and high energy, high energy. You, you have to have high energy. And that's important because he had high energy throughout the film. Even when when he was brought down low, right? When they would when they would suffer these really terrible setbacks, right? He would he would be sad, right, for a moment, but then he would just, you know, rally his energy and go forward. And I was just so inspired by his character in that movie. Uh, it's one of the most important characters I've ever seen in my life. And I really also feel the reason why I keep saying Steve Zahn rather than the character's name is, I don't think it came from the writing. I think it came from Steve Zahn. And the reason why is I've seen many of his other roles. I think he's a tremendous actor. I was so happy. That every time he comes on the screen, doesn't matter what he's in, Modern Family or, you know, uh, he was in this, uh, um, uh, like a horror movie called Joyride. I'm pretty sure that was the, the title of it. Um, you know, of course, Sahara and many, many, many other roles. I'm just always delighted to see him on the screen, and I just think he's he's really awesome. 
And I just think the, you know, what he brings to these roles is so unique. And these characters are, are so special that there's something really incredibly unique and special about Steve Zahn in any role. And specifically, his role in Sahara blessed me. You know, it blessed me in my life. And the reason why is, you know, that Passport 2 character was in my head because I had seen Steve Zahn carry out the Passport 2 character right there in the Sahara movie. If you haven't seen Sahara, go check it out. It's an amazing film. Watch Steve Zahn in that movie. He, he just acts circles around, you know, um, not the other people. Actually, it's a great film. Um, I just really feel that Steve Zahn brings something to every role he's in that very few other actors bring to those roles. I'm a huge fan of his. I highly recommend watching The Crossing. I highly recommend watching Sahara. But I'll also say I don't think you'll go wrong watching any Steve Zahn pro uh, production, anything he's in. Take care.